One of the social issues faced by the state of Alaska is the lack of mental and emotional well-being of the native Alaskans. It is very unfortunate that many of the Native Americans are living under poor conditions throughout the country. In the cases of Native Alaskans, even virtually entire villages are suffering from a lack of mental and emotional well-being, which includes continuing poor physical and mental health. Alcohol abuse, domestic violence, homicides, and suicides are frequent among them, which of course, lead to families falling apart. It is tragic to see that many children are abused and not educated properly. As a matter of fact, the children themselves are abusing alcohol and other chemicals, and the rate is increasing over the time. Since parents are suffering from mental illnesses and alcohol abuse, they can't take care of their children, so many children are being taken care of by others or simply neglected. Therefore, we can conclude that Alaskan natives are losing hold of their communities, cultural identities, and most importantly, their childhoods. So you can see how serious the issue is. Plus, rather than making a living for themselves, they are depending on public services and subsidies. They have lost control of and responsibility for their economy and governing institutions. But you can see from the relatively crooked and narrow streets of the city of Rome as they look from above today, you can see that again, the city grew in a fairly ad hoc way, as I mentioned. It wasn't planned all at once. It just grew up over time, beginning in the 8th century BC. Now this is interesting. Because what we know about the Romans is when they were left to their own devices and they could build the city from scratch, they didn't let it grow in an ad hoc way. They, they structured it in a, in a very care, very methodical way. That was basically based on military strategy, military planning. The Romans they couldn't have conquered the world without obviously having a masterful military enterprise. And they everywhere they went on their various campaigns, their various military campaigns, they would build, build camps and those camps were always laid out in a very geometric plan along a grid, usually square or rectangular. Frogs are a diverse and largely carnivorous group of short-bodied, tailless amphibians composing the order Anura. The oldest fossil proto-frog appeared in the early Triassic of Madagascar, but molecular clock dating suggests their origins may extend further back to the Permian, 265 million years ago. Frogs are widely distributed, ranging from the tropics to subarctic regions, but the greatest concentration of species diversity is found in tropical rainforests. There are approximately 4,800 recorded species, accounting for over 85% of extant amphibian species. They are also one of the five most diverse vertebrate orders. Besides living in fresh water and on dry land, the adults of some species are adapted for living underground or in trees. 
Adult frogs generally have a carnivorous diet consisting of small invertebrates, but omnivorous species exist and a few feed on fruit. Frogs are extremely efficient at converting what they eat into body mass. They are an important food source for predators and part of the food web dynamics of many of the world's ecosystems. The skin is semi-permeable, making them susceptible to dehydration, so they either live in moist places or have special adaptations to deal with dry habitats. Frogs produce a wide range of vocalizations, particularly in their breeding season, and exhibit many different kinds of complex behaviors to attract mates, to fend off predators and to generally survive. Frog populations have declined significantly since the 1950s. More than one-third of species are considered to be threatened with extinction and over 120 are believed to have become extinct since the 1980s. The number of malformations among frogs is on the rise and an emerging fungal disease, chytridiomycosis, has spread around the world. Conservation biologists are working to understand the causes of these problems and to resolve them. Frogs are valued as food by humans and also have many cultural roles in literature, symbolism and religion. There comes a time in a desert ant's life when a piece of food is too large to ignore, but too heavy to lift, and the only way to get it home is to adopt a new style of walking. The long-legged and speedy Cataglyphus fortis normally covers ground with a three-legged stride that moves two legs forwards on one side, and one on the other. For the next step, the insect mirrors the move with its other three legs. But recordings of ants in the Tunisian desert reveal that when faced with oversized lumps of food ten times their own weight, the forward tripod walking style is abandoned. Unable to lift the morsels in their mandibles, the ants drag the food backwards instead, moving all six legs independently. This is the first time we have seen this in any ants, said lead author Sarah Pfeffer at the University of Ulm in Germany. The ant's long legs already help keep their bodies away from the scorching desert floor and enable him to speed around at up to 60 cm per second. Think of Usain Bolt, who has very long legs compared to body size. The desert floor is also very hot. So the further away their bodies are from the surface, the better, said co-author Matthias Wittelinger. The ants have also evolved to function at body temperatures of 50 C in a desert where temperatures can soar to 70 C. They're basically just trying to get out of the heat, he added. Most Americans take energy for granted. But, for many families, maintaining access to reliable and affordable energy is a persistent challenge and a significant material hardship. This is a problem referred to as energy insecurity, and it affects millions of American households each year. We have found that energy insecurity is a growing and vexing problem among low-income households, and the COVID-19 pandemic has made this problem worse. 
Our analysis finds that that there are disparities in rates of energy insecurity across various socio-demographic groups. Black and Hispanic households, for example, are significantly more likely to experience energy insecurity and face utility disconnection than white households. So too are households with young children, individuals that require electronic medical devices, and those in dwellings with inefficient or poor conditions. Households that cannot pay for energy are unable to power electronic learning or medical devices, keep perishable, healthy food in the refrigerator, or maintain safe body temperatures. Under conditions of extreme heat or cold, people can suffer from mental and physical health consequences, including the possibility of death. Strategies for coping with uncomfortable temperatures, such as burning trash or sitting in one's car with the heat running, can lead to tragic outcomes as well. Our research underscores the importance of public policy that targets energy insecurity and its underlying causes. Weatherization assistance, incentives for residential solar power, energy bill assistance, and utility disconnection protections are all viable strategies for helping the millions of households across the country that are currently unable to pay their energy bills. So the pace at which human minds have evolved over the last million years and um, more recently probably the last 200,000 years has, has been so frighteningly rapid that, I mean, the evolution of cognitive function and perception can only occur in, in, in small number of genes. If, if one needed to adapt dozens of gene changes in concert in order to acquire the penetrating minds that we now have, which our ancestors 5,000 years ago didn't have, the, uh, the evolution could, could not have taken place. It, I mean, it really couldn't have occurred so quickly. And, and so for that reason alone, one, one begins to really sus suspect that, um, well, that, you know, the ge genetic differences between people who, who say, live 5,000 years ago is, is evidence that the difference between their cognitive functions and ours is not actually as large. Therefore, um, I mean, a rather small number of genes may be responsible for the powerful minds that humans have, which, which most of us now possess. We are going to start Chapter 3 today. The chapter is on cave paintings. Who can tell us about cave paintings? The drawings are mostly of animals. Correct. The animals are mostly bison, horses, and deer. The most common themes in cave paintings are large wild animals such as bison, horses, aurochs, and deer. Anthropologist Abby Bruill interpreted the paintings as being hunting magic. That is to say, they were meant to increase the number of animals. Drawings of humans are rare and are usually schematic rather than the more naturalistic animal subjects. Who can guess when cave painting started? Prehistoric times? 
Yes, the paintings were made during the Upper Paleolithic, about forty thousand years ago. Let me ask you another question: Who drew the paintings? Artists. Good answer. But who were the artists? What were their positions? Tribal leaders. Close, but incorrect. The artists were believed to be respected elders or shamans. The main colors of the paintings were limited to yellow, brown, charcoal, red, hematite, and manganese oxide. You might think that most of the patients at sleep clinics are being treated for sleeplessness, commonly referred to as insomnia, but that is not the case. The majority of sleep clinic patients suffer from disorders of excessive sleep or hypersomnia. While most insomniacs somehow manage to drag themselves through the day and function at acceptable, although not optimal levels, this is not so for people who suffer from hypersomnia. They are incapacitated by irresistible urges to sleep during the day, often in inappropriate situations at business meetings, in supermarkets, or at parties. Even more dangerous is their failure to remain awake when driving or operating machinery. Falling asleep in such situations could obviously be life-threatening. Many hypersomniacs suffer from narcolepsy, for which the primary symptom is excessive daytime sleepiness, though not apparent in childhood. This symptom most often appears for the first time during the teen years and continues throughout a person's life. The sleep attacks may occur as many as 15 to 20 times during the course of the day and last for periods from 15 minutes up to two hours. What can be done to help those suffering from narcolepsy? There are certain drugs that can help, and specialists suggest voluntary napping to decrease the frequency of such sleep attacks. Look at any photo of Earth's night side, and you see the planet lit up like a Christmas decoration. As the glowing lights of bustling cities expand, the serenity of natural darkness wanes. But the repercussions are not just the loss of the starry night sky. Light pollution also affects animals who depend on a nighttime environment to survive. Many bird species use the stars to navigate at night. Baby sea turtles use moonlight reflected off the ocean to guide them back to the water. City lights can confuse them and veer them off course. Humans are not immune either. Excessive exposure to artificial light at night can increase the risk of sleep disorders, and it's also been linked to obesity, depression, diabetes, and even cancer.
Subscribe our channel to get weekly and monthly PTA exam predictions according to your exam date. Please like, comment and share this video. Your appreciation is biggest motivation for us. See you in next video.